even though she's here. Uh, Tony Bennett left his heart in San Francisco. She left hers in Japan. And so uh, you continue to pray for her because God still has his hand on her. And God still has uh, places for her to go and people for her to reach. Uh, I pray your days uh, from this point on will be the best days that you've had thus far. God bless you. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. We'll do a little audible this morning. I'm going to ask you to turn to Mark chapter 4. God always knows what He's doing. I know, but He does. And so uh, we're going to uh, go to Mark chapter 4. And I want to show you something this morning, beginning with verse number 35. Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. You find that? Stand with me, please, and let's read from the Word of our Lord together. Mark 4, and beginning with the 35th verse. This is what the Bible says. On the same day, when evening had come, He, that is Jesus, said to them, that's the disciples, let us cross over to the other side, speaking of the Sea of Galilee. Now when they had left the multitude, they took Him along in the boat as He was, and other little boats were also with Him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling, that is, filling with water. It was already full of people. Now it's beginning to be full of water and people. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Father, we bless you for your word and for the testimony that we have heard and ask God now that this word will go forth, penetrate every heart, every life, every circumstance, every situation, every person. Not only those who are here in this sanctuary, but those who will be watching via YouTube. Touch hearts and lives. Change, challenge, convict us, consecrate us today through your word. By your Holy Spirit. For it's in the name of Christ our Savior that we ask it. Amen. Thank you. You be seated. There are two passages of Scripture in the New Testament that deal with storms on the water. One of them is here in Mark chapter 4, and it's in other parallel accounts. The other is found in Matthew chapter 14. The main difference between the two is the one here in Mark chapter 4, when the storm arose, Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. When the storm arose on the Sea of Galilee, as is mentioned in Matthew chapter 14, the disciples were in the boat and they were about halfway across the Sea of Galilee, but Jesus was separated from them and he was up on the mountain and he was praying for them. And then he comes in the fourth watch of the night, the Bible says. He comes walking on the water to meet them at their point of need. But at the beginning of that storm, Jesus was nowhere to be seen. They were in the boat. He was somewhere else. In the case here in Mark chapter 4, we see that Jesus was in the boat. But Jesus was not a part of what was going on at that particular time because when the storm arose and when they were trying to do what they needed to to combat the storm, the Bible says that Jesus was asleep on a pillow at the back of the boat. And they did all that they could do. I'm sure, even though the Bible doesn't go into great detail, I'm sure that there were those who were rowing the boat and then there were those who were bailing out the water. 
as quickly as they could because the Bible says that the boat was filling up. Like I told you a minute ago, it was already full of people. There was the, the 12 disciples and Jesus, so there were at least 13 people on that vessel. Could have been more, but that's the 13 that we know of. So it was already full of people. Now it was beginning to get full of water. And they did what they could do in the time that was allotted to them. But to be truthful, they weren't getting anywhere very quickly. They weren't making much movement from one side of the Sea of Galilee to the other. And they weren't making a whole lot of progress as far as keeping that boat above water level. Some were rowing. Some were bailing. Probably all were afraid. All were nervous. Some possibly were praying. It got to the point to where finally, exhausted from what they could do themselves, they go to the back of the boat and they wake up Jesus and they say unto Him, Master, carest thou not that we are perishing? Ever been there? I won't ask for a show of hands. But you ever been there to where you're thinking, Lord, don't you see? Don't you understand? Aren't you aware? Can't you tell that I'm in trouble here? Can you see that my boat is filling up with water? I mean, a little while ago it was ankle deep and then it was knee deep and now it's waist deep and before long it'll be neck deep and then I'll be in the deep. Lord, don't you care? Aren't you concerned? The idea is this. They were crying out to Him and they were saying what so often we say. Lord, why don't you do something? Lord, save us! In other words, if you don't do something, I'm not trying to pull a pun here, but we're sunk. Okay? Because we've done all we can do. They had come, I need to remember this. When they woke Jesus up, they had come to the end of themselves. They had nothing else to give. And so finally, in desperation, they cry out to Him. They wake Him up. I don't know whether they had to nudge Him. But they cried out to Him and said, Master, if you don't do something, we're going to drown. Storms are something that we deal with from time to time. It doesn't matter whether you're a pastor. It doesn't matter if you're a missionary. It doesn't matter if you're a lay person, a man or a woman. It doesn't matter if you're an adult. It doesn't matter if you're a youth. At some point in time, storms are going to come blowing in to each and every one of our lives. Some of you could get up here and could testify and could confess as to a storm or storms or multiple storms that you've had to deal with. <coughs> Some of you in this very room are dealing with storms at the very moment in which we're talking. Now they could be vastly different. It might be a financial storm. It could be a physical health storm. It could be a spiritual storm. It could be a number of different things. It could be a relational storm. It could be a thousand different things. But regardless of what it is, a storm is a storm. Right? And it goes back to what I've told you before <laughs> concerning surgeries. 
I mentioned this one time before about surgeries. I said, you know what the difference is between major surgery and minor surgery? Minor surgery is when you're having it done. Major surgery is when it's happening to me. Okay? So the difference in a major storm and a minor storm is it's minor when it's yours. It's major when it's mine. Right? Yeah. Because somebody else might look at our storm and they might say, that's nothing. Let me tell you the storm that, you know. But when it comes blowing up in your life and in your face, and as young people say, it gets in your grill, you know. <laughs> when it's in your grill, it's major, right? But here's what I want you to understand. Here's what the disciples missed. Here's what you and I miss. I read through the verse. I didn't stop. I just continued to read through. I read the entire passage. But what did the disciples miss when Jesus put them in the boat? Jesus said unto them, He got them in the boat, and Jesus said, Let us cross over unto the other side. Okay? Let us cross over to the other side. <coughs> Jesus told them prior to his lying down and taking a nap, it is my intention that we go from this side to that side. Now, the Lord of all creation was asleep the back of that boat. But before he went to sleep, he said, we're going over to the other side. Boys, I'm going to go take a nap. I'll, I'll see you when we get to the other side. You got my permission to wake me up. But when we get there, we got work to do. While we're going, I'm going to go take a nap. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that if Jesus thought there was the slightest opportunity for them to drown in the Sea of Galilee, that he would have went and laid down and took a nap? Nod your head like this and look intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Jesus would not have left them there to fend for themselves. Jesus knew. Jesus knew it was going to be all right. Jesus knew that when they left the one side, they were going to make it to the other side. And they were going to make it in one piece and in one boat. Therefore, they didn't have to worry. They didn't have to fret. They didn't have to mop their brow. Actually, they probably didn't have time to mop their brow, but they didn't have time to do that. They didn't have a reason to do that. Here's what I want you to remember. I don't know what you're going through right now. And without sounding ugly and callous, because I don't mean it to, and hopefully you'll understand. I don't care what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. My God is bigger than any storm that you will ever face, regardless of what it is. Right. It doesn't matter. I remember the... Uh, Evangelist, baseball player turned evangelist Billy Sunday who many years ago was preaching in a crusade this was pre-Billy Graham and Billy Sunday was preaching and a woman came up to him after the service because he had been preaching on faith in God she came up to him after the service and she said but Reverend Sunday you just don't know how big my problem is. And he looked at her and he said, Madam, apparently you don't 
understand how big my God is. Amen. Okay? Let me, let me throw this out at you and we're going to go home. Last night, my son Jerry called me. He said, Dad, he said, Dad, I'll throw a little wisdom on you. <laughs> I said, all right, shoot. And he said, and to be honest with you, I cannot remember where he said he had read this. But he said, I was reading. And he said, you know our solar system and that we're in the Milky Way galaxy. And I said, yes, sir, I understand. <coughs> and he said, okay. He said, if you took the earth. Matter of fact, he said, uh, this will work. That's an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. Okay. He said, if you were to take an 11 and a half or an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper and you were to put the earth on it as though it was just a speck. Okay? Just a speck. He said, and then you then if you put the sun up next to it, he said you would only get a quarter of the sun on the piece of paper when the earth is no more than just a speck. Because the sun is so much larger than planet Earth. He said, and then he read concerning the Milky Way galaxy in which we are a part of. If you take that sun as large as it is, and he said, you make the sun the size of a white blood cell. Now that's pretty small. But he said, if you reduce the size of the moon, excuse me, the size of the sun down to the size of a white blood cell, the Milky Way galaxy is the size of the United States of America. Yet, the same God who spoke all of that into existence is the same God who created you. But remember something. Remember something. He spoke that into existence. But He didn't speak man into existence. Bible says he fashioned man. It's a man. And Psalm chapter 139 talks about the fact that we are intricately woven in our mother's womb. We're like a tapestry that God has knitted together in the dark secret place of our mother's womb. God, the God who created this wide expanse by just simply saying, let it be, and it won't, is the same God who fashioned you and formed you and shaped and molded you and then <sighs> breathed into your nostrils the breath of life. Now, being that as it is, <coughs> what do you got to worry about? Hmm? Kind of puts problems in perspective, doesn't it? Remember that song? Our God is an awesome God. He, you know what I'm saying? Our God is an awesome God. They didn't have to worry. They didn't have to fret because God was on board the ship. God was in the boat. And if you know Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord of your life, you know what? God's in your vessel because Jesus said, I've come as our 
Dear friends, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I love you with an everlasting love. I always have. I always will. You can rest in me because I am greater than any storm you'll ever face. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for directing our thoughts and for giving us a word today that we needed to hear. Father, I don't know what's going on in people's lives. That's really none of my business unless they decide to make it my business because they want me to help them pray about something. But Father, we all go through storms. Pastors are not immune. Missionaries are not immune. People who have been Christians for... 60 years are not immune. People who have been Christians for 15 minutes are not immune. You said in your word, in this life or in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We need to take that to the bank of our heart today, Lord, and deposit it that we might never forget. So, Lord, whatever we're facing today, Whatever storm we might be going through. Whatever difficult circumstance we might be involved with. Help us to understand that it is never, ever, ever bigger than you. And just like you spoke peace be still to that storm and it ceased immediately. You will speak peace over our troubled hearts and bring us safely to the other side. Thank you, Father. Speak now to our hearts. Lord, this altar is open for any and everyone who needs to come. But help us to be open and obedient and to thank you and praise you that you're always within our vessel. For these things we pray and ask in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. 312 is our end of decision. 312, softly and tenderly. God has spoken to your heart today and you need to come to this altar. I'll be more than happy to pray with you. If I can help you with something specifically, please let me know that. Let's just simply be obedient to His leading today. 312, let's stand together.